Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha, and today I'm having, you guys guessed it, because I'm doing three D's in a row, grilled chicken breast, rice, Asian stir-fried vegetables, guacamole, man, that is a mouthful to say. I'm not going to name all the individual vegetables, but it is pretty good. Let's talk about dumbbells. Something I've focused on lately more, and I want to make a point with this, because um, when I first got my dumbbells at home and set them up, because it is so hard, it's because of the handles I'm using, the Olympic handles, and they protrude, and the clamps and everything, I was struggling when I was doing presses to get them back to my lap, because it would hurt if I did them wrong, and so I was dropping them for a little while, but I very quickly realized uh, that's silly that I need to control, even in that case, even though it's harder because of the dumbbell design instead of the flat bottom ones, it's a good idea to control them. And here's the thing, guys. When we are doing dumbbell work, and no, I don't believe in people saying, oh, I do only dumbbells. Well, this doesn't apply to me because I only do dumbbells for my upper body. Well, that's just silly. Like, why would you do that? Dumbbells are great. I love dumbbells. I prescribe dumbbells. I use dumbbells. I think they're fantastic. I'm going to get that out of the way. And replace barbells. I think that if you really want to maximize your size and strength and everything, it would be a good idea to use both. Right? I think it's a good idea to use both. I think in some cases, even some machine work, even for strength athletes. I own a couple machines. I own two machines that I bought, have here in my home. But generally speaking, you need to do both. And here's the thing. Ego lifting with dumbbells is dumb. It defeats the purpose of dumbbells. It means you don't understand dumbbells. So if someone's training only with dumbbells, and their ego lifting as a result of it, they're being a jackass. They're just being silly. Because with barbells, it is easier and safer to lift big, heavy weights. It is. That is why barbells are king for strength training. There's, that is why they're the king of strength training. It's the best tool we have to move big weights. Best tool we have to move big weights. So I tend to be an advocate of, and I'm not saying exclusively because we can do high rep lighter work with barbells too. Absolutely can. And we often do. But barbells are where you should do your heavy work. Your heavy work. Your challenging ones, threes, fives, things like that. Dumbbells exist and they're useful because they're great for metabolic fatigue. So let's talk about chest pressing and everything. They're great for the range of motion. They're great for the way that they fatigue you and destabilize so that as you get more and more fatigued through sets and reps, the movement pattern changes and different muscles get worked at slightly different angles. Right? I mean, this is a big advantage. This is why dumbbells are good. This is the actual reason. The range of motion, the ability to create less overuse and potentially more overall hypertrophy through several muscles or heads of a muscle as you get fatigued due to the bar path changing with fatigue, due to the instability. Okay. In other words, they're great for finishing. And not just one muscle. I mean, dumbbell chest press works multiple muscles, right? Works pecs, works delts, works triceps. And I don't care whether that's flat, decline, incline. Hey, it's not an ego lift. It's not an ego lift. Do your heavy work with a barbell. Again, I don't care if it's flat, decline, incline. You guys see me do flat and incline both. Do your heavy work with a barbell. Dumbbells are there to finish. They're there to get that deeper metabolic fatigue, long ranges of motion, 
stretch reflex. Okay. And they're good for it. They're great for it. And, you know, we see this all the time. I remember when Devin Vizik quite a few years ago tore his pec doing goofy ego lifting with them, but he tore a pec. So what happens when you ego lift. Doing a weight too heavy for him to lift on the dumbbells and doing partial range of motion. All right? It's how you get hurt. I like that guy with Larry Wheels as partner with the incline bench. It's not because he lifted heavy. He lifted a weight he couldn't handle and was doing partials. Not to ego lifting. You do partials, you better have a hard stop, a way to stop it. You don't ever do partials in the air. You do partials against pens, against boards, against boxes, right? You do partials in a way that you can stop the range of motion. You shouldn't do them in the air. It's how you get hurt. It's how you tear muscles off the bone, right? Everyone knows this who's been training for any length of time. So it's shocking that guys with years of experience still do silly shit like that. All right, dumbbells fall into that category, and here's what I'm going to say. I can tell you real quickly how to tell if dumbbells are too heavy. If you need a spotter to get dumbbells into position, you're probably ego lifting. Okay? You should be able to get dumbbells into position without a spotter. You should be able to set them down without throwing them on the ground. Now, people say, well, Ronnie Coleman... Just do the 200 pound double stomach. You gonna tell Ronnie Coleman? I'll tell Ronnie Coleman anything I want. He's a busted up old man. I don't care. I don't care about some silly bodybuilder who's hurt. I'm not saying he wasn't strong or the best at what he did. But if you're gonna use silly bravado as your argument, well, tell that to Ronnie Coleman. I mean, you know how stupid you sound? Silly bravado. So then I could just reply with, well, you know, I don't give a shit. I'm not afraid of that beat up old man. I'll tell him whatever I want. See, that's the same level of response. So it's engaging someone back on their level. Because I don't really actually feel that way. But no one cares. You're not Ronnie Coleman. You're not throwing around 200 pound dumbbells. And Ronnie Coleman could do them for 12 reps. Right? You doing 12 reps with a full range of motion or whatever weight you're using? Even then, he chose to throw them on the ground. Maybe it was all the gear going to his head. If he could do 12 full range of motion reps and the guy can deadlift 800 pounds, I'm pretty sure he could have set those back down on his lap and put them on the floor. Right? Pretty sure he could have. But if you can't get the dumbbells into position yourself without a spotter and you can't set them back down on the floor under control or back in the rack, you're probably ego lifting. You're probably doing partials. That includes even your, your seated overhead stuff, which all you guys love to do partials on that. I don't know why. You're, you're probably ego lifting. You're probably going too heavy. It's not the best way to use dumbbells. Get your ego in check. Use weight you control. These are finesse movements. These are movements to induce metabolic fatigue after your heavy work. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.